Everybody, hello. Right, I'm just going to check that I've got the audio right today. Um, can somebody comment, please, just to tell me if you can hear me? That's the first thing. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I'm going to say some hellos. Hello to who have we got? We've got Pooja in India. Um, we've got Jonathan in Epsom. Um, where else? Put where you're from. Um, it would be good to see. And Crash Team Racer and Floral Victoria. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, hello, and let's get started. Um, the first thing really is um, to say welcome and um, I hope you've enjoyed the last three tutorials, uh, the th three classes, workshops, discussion points, whatever you want to call them. Um, I'm really enjoying doing them. And But the best thing is seeing you guys send me in some of the challenges that I've been setting for you. So just to give a quick recap, um, the challenge yesterday was to um, find some objects around the house and try and create some letters. First of all, your initial, maybe spell your name, um, and then send them to me, and um, I'll put together an alphabet. So if we can just quickly have a look at that. Um, oh, hang on, it's on here, I think. So that's the isolation alphabet that we created yesterday. And huge, huge thank you to everybody. But um, there is a special mention um, to Joe and Bev in Cornwall, who did the whole alphabet in about an hour, or maybe even less than an hour. And they sent it to me on my Instagram, and I couldn't believe it. They just, they, they just aced this challenge and got everything down. Um, so um, a few of their things are in there. So if we just go through these really quickly, there's a bulldog clip looked at from the side um, for letter A. There's two candles from plan view from overhead they're from barbara in amsterdam um then this one is really weird right <laughs> it's um i think it's like the legs of an ornament of a dog um something like that and then there's a uh, d is a handle e i think is a lock on a suitcase i love this one the fur and it's the letter F. So that's just so fantastic because not only is it a beautiful photograph, uh, also it uh, um, the letter tells the name of the thing that it is of the fur and also the G clamp next, really good. And then H, I think that's some sort of like skirting boards room in a corner, I couldn't quite tell. Um, there's a cork. Uh, I think that J is a door handle. I put my twiglet in there because I love that one so much. Um, L is an Allen key. Um, M, I think, is something to do with a fire. And then there's a hook, a button, a cup hook, a whoopee cushion. I really love R. Look at that. That's so ingenious, so fantastic. It's um, a tape measure pulled out and uh, a little bit to show, and probably on lock um, to show that letter. Then a USB cable, a hammer, um, again, some sort of staple or rusty thing from the garden. I think that's. Um, one to nine and some sort of question marks and exclamation points, that would be great. Um, where are you guys? Oh, it's Snowy from the Tintin fridge magnet. Thank you, that's the dog, right? Brilliant. Okay, so if you do want to send me stuff, send stuff here, please. So send me stuff on Instagram to I am Pascal Anson. So I'm gonna put that up there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Um, my username on YouTube is Pascal Anson, but really weirdly, somebody called, well, he wasn't even called Pascal Anson, took Pascal Anson on Twitter and Instagram. So that's not me. So on Twitter and Instagram, it's I am Pascal Anson. Um, I try and read all the messages on there. So please send stuff. Um, and um, hopefully I can feature some of your, your artwork. Um, <coughs> Uh, 
Right, so today's challenge is about uh, introduction to landscape, sort of about landscapes, but also sort of about mark making and um, thinking about trying to be really clever with the marks you make. I guess this uh, class is probably aimed at secondary school upwards. I think for little kids um, or young kids, it's it's less interesting maybe than the uh, than the alphabet from yesterday. Um, but really, um, no matter how brilliant an artist you are, I think this uh, this class is always going to be something that you can think about um, and try and get better at. Um, so yeah, let's start. Um, I asked you to find a, um, a postcard. So will that come up? Yes. So that's the postcard that I found. Um, I'm from London, I'm from South London. So this is taken from the South Bank. So it's taken from South London. So it's really particularly important to me. And of course, it's a very iconic uh, landmark in London, but really any postcard with a landmark will do. Um, your favorite building, your favorite landmark, um, Taj Mahal, Sydney Opera House, um, I don't really mind. But I think this probably works better with something that is iconic. And by iconic, I mean something recognizable. If you choose a postcard of a beach, beaches are fairly generic and they can be um, not iconic and not specific. Um, so really this exercise, you'll see why later, but this is really about choosing something very recognizable. Um, so yeah, try and find a postcard of um, a landmark. If you can't find a photograph um, or a postcard, then you can find an image online um, or on a screen of your favorite landmark. Um, I, want to, I want to talk about that a little bit because um, you'll probably know that on Painting Challenge on BBC, we do not let the contestants use photographs to work from. Um, and I think this is a really, really important issue. It's always, always discussed um, by artists about using photographs and using photographic source material to help with your work. Um, I've tried to think about, I've tried to think about this in terms of a discussion because I think there's no right or wrong answer and I don't want to force you to do something that you don't want to do. But I do think that if you draw from reality um, rather than the photograph, it helps you get better. And the way I see it maybe is a bit like eating a chocolate bar. So I love chocolate, but I know it's not really that good for me. So I can eat a chocolate bar and I can enjoy it and get pleasure from that. But really it's not doing me much good. And it only lasts, you know, the happiness of eating a bar of chocolate only lasts a little while. And it's a little bit like that when we draw from photographs. We can, of course, get a closer um, image, picture, um, uh, canvas, painting, drawing, whatever it is, um, from, a, from a photograph. But something's missing, right? Because the two-dimensional image is already framed. And I think in the translation process from the photograph or the image onto the canvas, something really does get lost. Um, and there's just nothing that really replicates you being there and trying to understand what you're looking at. Um, and I think, I think this plays a lot into people's self-confidence and self-esteem when it comes to their, their painting. My, <coughs> excuse me, my dad is a really good example of this, right? So he is an artist, he was an artist, um, and he just like, he just never cared about what anybody thought of him. And he, he really lived his life like that as a character, but it also came through when he painted and when he did artwork. So he just didn't really care what anybody would think. And I've told this story a few times to people, but when I'd go and see him um, when I was a teenager, um, I'd see him at the weekend and we'd, uh, he'd pick me up, we'd go to you know have lunch somewhere uh, at a, a town, uh, nearby um, and uh, if there wasn't anywhere to park and there was a free parking space in somebody's drive my dad would just drive in and park and I found this completely cringe making as a teenager but um, 
you know, his logic there was like, well, it's free and I don't care what they think about me. And, you know, I was just thinking, oh, God, that's really, like really horrible and really rude. And I think as I got older, I realized that he took that same attitude with his work. He was a brilliant painter, but he just did not care what people thought of his artwork. And I think that's a, like a really, really big strength. And I suppose I'm telling you that story because if you can push yourself not to draw from photographs and really to think about um, maybe not doing what you think is as good a piece of artwork, but doing it from reality, I do know that that will help you get better. And I do believe that you'll, you'll end up in a much, much better place than just copying something from a photograph. I know it's really contentious. I don't want to tell you what to do. My advice uh, would be to always, if you can, draw from reality, whether it's a cat, whether it's a human being, or whether it's a landscape. Um, and then I think we get into all sorts of complicated conversations about illustration and art, or illustration versus art, and art versus pictures and images and all sorts of things. But it's really worth thinking about. If you're there in a landscape, you're going to experience the cold. You're going to have to do it quicker. You're going to experience people coming along and looking at it, which is difficult. Maybe um, you're going to the canvas is going to go blow over. Um, you know, it's a struggle. But what will happen is that struggle will be represented in your in your finished artwork, and you should not be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Don't be afraid of doing something which represents the authenticity of being in that location. And I think it's super, super important. You know, don't be, don't be afraid of your response to something. Right, that's my, that's my mantra. Um, and that's my rant over and done with for today. So um, let's move on to, um, let's move on to what I'd like you to think about doing um, with this. Okay, so let's see, there's my, there's my postcard. Right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a series of, of drawings here. And I'm going to be really, really strict with myself. And I'm going to just um, I'm going to just um, I'm going to count the amount of lines that I do. So the first time I, I'm going to draw the um, uh, the Tower Bridge. It's not really, it's less about me copying what's there. It's more thinking about the lines that I'm going to use, um, the strokes uh, of the paintbrush. And just let, let, just bear with me and let's see, let's see where this goes. So the first one I'm going to do is going to be a hundred lines. So by lines or strokes, um, they're kind of singular strokes, right? It's not about a continuous line to do it. It's like individual, individual strokes. Okay, so let's start this. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. These are almost um, these are almost just construction lines at the moment. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 
43, 44. I've got my postcard out of sight here. 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. Seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine, sixty, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88. So I'm looking for details now. 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96. 97, 98, 99, 100. Okay, so that's, that's 100 marks. Okay, and that's what I end up with. So it's a rough sketch of something. I had quite a lot of requests for people asking about how to capture something in a few simple lines. And I thought it would be worth doing this or some kind of replying to that question um, with this exercise. Okay, so that's the first one right now. I'm gonna do that again, but this time I'm gonna do it with 50. I'm gonna start in the same place, I think, or maybe here. One, two, oops, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, I'm running out. What else do I need to do to uh, I think I need to do some of the bottom. 44, what was that? 43, 44, 45, 40, 45, 
46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Okay, so that's 50. Right, same thing again, 25. So, one, okay, I'm gonna start with the other color actually, a bit lighter. You can do this with paint or felt tip pens or pencils. Give it a go, see how you do. So let's go for 25. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, ooh, 22, so I've got three left, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, do that again. Get rid of that one. Okay, so I've got 12 now. Right, I've got to be really careful, I think. So, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine, ten. 11, well, I've got one more. Um, do that. I reckon I was gonna go there, 12. Yikes, that was hard, that was really hard. Okay, gonna do one more now. And this time I've got I've got six, I'm gonna do, I've got six brush strokes to play with. Let's see if I can do a recognizable um, tower bridge in six strokes. One. Two. Three, oops, too thick. Three, three, four, five, six. Hmm, gosh, six. So another go. I'll have one more go at doing that. I think I can do better. Right, let's have a go. One. Two. Is that right? Three.
four. No, I think that is it. Five. Six. Yeah, I suppose that's not too bad, is it? Okay, so I've gone from that, which was the postcard, to that one. Doesn't seem that many now, does it? Which was 100 marks. That one, which was 50, that looks like nothing. That one at 25. <laughs> that one at 12. I think that's I think that's really bad, that one. I think that's the worst one, actually. And that last one at six strokes. Quite cute, that one. I quite like that one. Um, right, I'm using, I'm using Procreate on a tablet. I'm using that mainly because it shows up much better um, when uh, I'm talking to you guys. Um, let me just look on here. Yeah, if you're a perfectionist, you're gonna find this really, really difficult. But you know, art is difficult, art is really hard. And this is discipline, it's something which you do to kind of make yourself better. You become much more economic um, with your choices, with your brush strokes. So look, I was using um, brush on iPad. Um, <coughs> excuse me. But all that really, really translates into how you use your brush, um, be it a decorator's brush or a watercolor brush or something much finer. Um, because you've got a choice with pressure, you've got a choice with where do you use it that way around, uh, or where do you use it that way around to get um, a fatter mark. The pressure that you put on the brush is obviously really important because it translates um, the paint onto the canvas in a very, very different way. So this is being about like super conscious with every single brush stroke. Um, it's a really good exercise. It doesn't take very long as you can see, but you do need to be really disciplined and really um, kind of hard on yourself because um, it only works if you're strict. But I do think it will um, make you just much better at looking, but also much more kind of careful with every brush stroke that you use. So um, hopefully you can see that why it doesn't really matter because we're not really copying um, a photograph uh, or a postcard in a photorealistic way. We're just using that to try and figure out what's important in what we're looking at and what isn't so important. Um, you know, there was a lot of information in that, wasn't there? There's, there's a lot of windows and trellis and flags and water and buildings and cars uh, and reflections and lots and lots of things which I didn't put in because I didn't have enough brush strokes to do that. So give that a go, um, send them to me. I hope you, um, uh, hope you found that useful. Um, and um, yeah, let me know anything else that you want to, um, uh, want to know about. I've got a big, big long list now growing uh, next to my desk of things that we're going to uh, cover over the next days. And I will see you tomorrow for uh, the next class, which is going to be still life and you will need a vegetable. All right, I will see you then.